The, thing, the things I, I was kind of intrigued about was the, your little uh, contact mic heat sink doodad. Mm -hmm. You were getting uh, chords out of that as you were kind of strumming mm -hmm. it, and the chords would change. And I was curious, maybe you could share your secret sure. of how to how you were tuning those <laughs> heat sink bars in real time. Give us your secrets. Give us the secrets. Um, here, if I move live the session window. This is the live. This is the yeah. live session window I was working off of. And the heatsink channel, I conveniently named heatsink. And um, it's really just a, a dummy channel that has someone correctly called the resonator um, little patch on it down over here. And then all these clips um, that are in here that look like audio aren't actually audio. Or there's audio in here, but they're all, um, we're not listening to any of it. But they all have um, uh, envelope directions over here on the effect rack, which is controlling, everyone wants to know this, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> macro one, or macro two, which is controlling pitch on the resonator. There you go. All right. And then, uh, ooh, extra points go to the fact that I had follow actions on all these clips too, so they would they would just kind of trigger each, each other and change different chords. Excellent. Yeah. We have reached oh. geek level four. Woo! <laughs> it's all about. It's good. Good job. Thank you. All right, anyone have any questions for Chachi? <laughs> Anybody? What was the program for uh, changing all the video images? I yeah, that was, that was definitely a, a beta. <laughs> a beta, because it, it's dependent on what audio I feed it. It's, um, it's Mac's own uh, developer program called... Uh, Quartz Composer. Quartz Composer, thank you. What? What is it called? It's called Quartz Composer. It's, um, it's basically for people who want to program like screensavers and graphics for uh, natively on the Mac. And uh, it's a really fun program to dig into. And if you've got the kind of extra developers extra, if you bought a Mac recently, it's a, it's a fun install. And it, it just looks like... <laughs> Where is it? Where are you? Close, delete, window. There, that's what it looks like. You can kind of build your own structures in here. And uh, this one was uh, basically, it took in incoming audio input. I'll get my gigantic head out of the way. Uh, incoming input, and it would spit it out into, or split it out into uh, an audio spectrum. So at different frequencies would trigger different, uh, different clips. This is a monster. Yeah, and so, yeah, ah, this is the, the alpha geek. Oh competition. And so these are all, uh, this is a different bank of photos. These are all photos that I'd taken like two years ago. So I loaded them all up and then they would kind of um, they'd switch off based on uh, uh, a little ramp, value ramp that would just kind of decide source one, source two, source three after like so five minutes. So it chooses minutes. randomly? Yeah, ish. It's not by pitch? <laughs> Like uh, certain, certain it, no, it is, it is pitch. Like um, each one of these would have three photos being fed into it. Uh, one of which would be like high range, one mid range, one low range. So that when those frequencies would hit, the different image would trigger. But then I had different banks of images that would switch out over here. So <laughs> you're, when you're getting sick of these three images, five minutes later these three images would come in, and five minutes later those ones. So Ideally. You program it for a duration of time. Uh, just the switching so that people don't get, see that picture of my dog on a walk for like yeah. 20 minutes, you know. <laughs> and the dog kept on like getting Bites. bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, put the, I put the Ken Burns effect just for the end result too so that people wouldn't get too bored at the, the end. So, yeah. 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 Alright, geek level 7. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? What kind right. of turntable is that? It is a Columbia Model GP3 turntable that has all Japanese writing on it. I traded my friend uh, Matoki in Japan. Uh, he wanted a Nike Walkman really bad, and so I traded him for that for this. And I, I think I got the... Yeah. Uh, you ripped them off! Yeah, I know, I totally ripped them off. He was happy to trade me, so... <laughs> How do you get your bass to crack like that? Uh, like crack, like, <laughs> like hurt you? <laughs> yeah, crack. almost. Um, the the baseline synth here, uh, both these, the the drum machine and the TB303, 
are modified slightly just to get really like ridiculous range out of them. So the 303, the cutoff filter almost works as a volume knob. I can uh, cut off the filters all the way past audibility, and then I can crank the uh, what is it? The envelope modification so that just like in the really like powerful notes will kind of push through and crack you in the eardrum and make you want to leave. <laughs> um, but it, it's kind of cool it's like, as a dub effect when you kind of bring the tempo down. Oh yeah, were you, were you using reverb from your mixer? Is that? The I reverb? I there was like reverb. Yeah, yeah that's the little um, Spock pedal over here. Oh, again. okay, cool. That puts yeah. me at the Geek Level 8, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned a Spock is an automatic increase in Geek Level right. 1. So <laughs> move forward one geek step. All right. <laughs>